Some emergencies grab your attention. When the engine quits, you have no doubt about what's happening. But when your brain starts to shut down, you may not even notice. That's the insidious danger of hypoxia. And you don't have to be flying at the flight levels to have it happen to you. Here's more from Sarah Diener. Any pilot who flies uh, even in the middle altitudes, even seven, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 feet, has got to be aware of the fact that hypoxia can affect us all differently and at different altitudes, and you need to be aware of your personal hypoxic signs. With recent hypoxia accidents fresh on our minds, a group of AOPA staffers flew to Battle Creek, Michigan to learn what our individual signs of hypoxia could be. Dr. Gregory Pinnell runs the High Altitude Lab at the Western Michigan College of Aviation. He says the symptoms of hypoxia are unique to each pilot. They're very individual, but some of the common ones that we see uh, that are probably the most relevant to flying are uh, the wooziness, uh, degrading judgment, uh, inability to focus, uh, reduction in vision. Uh, those are the ones that uh, concern us the most when it comes to flying. First some classroom work, then we broke into two groups for our time in the Norma Barrick Altitude Chamber. When the first group took off their masks, they were suddenly at 30,000 feet. Okay, so I noticed I got really euphoric and giddy, or, or more giddy than normal, <laughs> but it was, it, it was to the 10th degree. I think I had an in interesting combination of sort of the wooziness, dizziness, but it's more almost felt alcohol-induced. Right. Yeah, and a little bit of the tingling, and then I don't know if it's a mental thing more than anything, but I, like when we were doing the, the screw exercise, Right. Yeah. I was incredibly focused on it, as if right. I was compensating. Then it was my turn. All right, everybody's got their mask on, got good flow on everybody's mask. Everybody put your pulse ox on, and let's make sure everybody's up in the 90s before we uh, before we take off. I'm oxygen now, and um, I'm at 96% oxygen saturation, which is still in a healthy range. We flew a little lower than the first group, 25,000 feet. The first to notice any symptoms was one of AOPA's professional pilots. Pleasant feeling, which is part of the problem. I'm starting to feel like hot. Okay, flushing. That's flushing. one of the first hypoxic signs. I didn't feel much. Slight dizziness, but okay. not too bad. But Dr. Pinnell detected serious hypoxic symptoms with another colleague. Your fingers are actually starting to get cold, too. Uh, I have an estimate on anyway. He's also starting to get a little bit of tremors, too. Back out of the chamber, we compared notes. I still didn't believe the, how fast the effect is. I felt woozy, but I didn't feel like there was a dramatic change. But I feel like I could have recognized something was off and requested a descent. Um, but I guess when you're looking for it, it's a little bit different. I, I felt like my temperature rising really quick. So you put yeah, the Yeah, and I... I didn't, my vision was, I didn't feel like that my vision was impaired. And then uh, I could tell my vision, it was uh, not as clear. Then my toes started to tingle a little, so. Dr. Pinnell says that you should redo hypoxia training every few years. Now the other thing too is remember that hypoxic signs and symptoms change over the years. The reason that in the Air Force, the reason we require it every five years is because we know that they will change. I know that when I was a punk, you know, captain, flight surgeon, um, and I know that my, my symptoms are different than they, than they are now. And some things are better, some things are, are a little bit worse. I know I don't tolerate 30,000 foot very well. Sarah Diener, AOPA Live.